Now, complete high school football coverage. This is 10 Sports First and 10, brought to you by these sponsors. Welcome to the Big Show Week 10, and it is spooky season. Everyone is entitled to one good scare. I would say the universe is full of magical things that are patiently waiting for our wits to grow sharper. Our first and 10 web team is pretty darn sharp, led by Allie Ganey's finest, Allie Graham. If you need anything, check it out. Which brings us to the game of the week, a trip into the Mountain Empire for a couple of teams that have gotten into the habit of meeting again in the playoffs. That said, 10 Sports' Eric Johnson spent the evening in Independence, where Grayson County hosted rival George Wythe. For the second consecutive season, Grayson County entered its matchup with George Wythe sitting at 8-0. You'll recall the Maroons handed the Blue Devils their first loss last year, seeking to do the same tonight, only this time on a brand new turf here at Bill Strong Field. Fans of all ages pumped up and ready for this matchup, the Region 1C Championship rematch to be exact from a year ago. Blue Devils trying to remain unbeaten, Maroons crashing the party early. First play of the game for George Wythe, backed up at the four-yard line, tandemonium would happen. It's Tandem Smith gets some blocks, rolls 55 yards down the field that led to a touchdown and a 6-0 lead. Grayson County trying to respond. Check out the handoff to Aaron Peterson, but he fumbles. Recovered by Trey Sparks of the Maroons later in the first half. More defense from with Dylan Sisk in the backfield for the big sack on this play. At the other end, it's Phipps trying to haul in the 22-yard touchdown on fourth down, but just off of his fingertips. Second half, both teams struggled in the red zone yet again after a Grayson fumble. The defense forces a turnover on downs inside the five-yard line here. Big play in the backfield, but the Blue Devils couldn't do anything with it. Dow's pass picked off by Tandem Smith. Takes it all the way down to the one that led to a field goal and a 9-0 lead mid-fourth quarter with adding some insurance. Braden Rainey on the handoff. Blue Devils can't stand the rain because that is a touchdown. George Wins shuts the door in this region final matchup, 23 3-0 over Grayson County. We played great defensively, was able to make some adjustments. Um, you know, I was worried about the quarterback and receivers all week because, man, they're good. They are. They're really good. And our kids came out and made plays. Beating an 8-0 team, undefeated team, coming in here thinking we're the underdog and just smack them like this, holding them to zero points, that's pretty good. After that uh, loss for Galax, we knew we had to step up our game. So these past couple games, we've just been locked in. And now uh, this big win out here, hopefully people know that we're a good team and we're the one to watch. Grayson County suffering his first loss of the season. As for the Maroons, they are now 6-3 and three after an 0-2 start to the season, and they tell me they feel like they're starting to remind people just why they are the state runner-up. In Independence, Eric Johnson, 10 Sports. Thank you, Eric. Pair of Thursday games. Uh, Giles ran into a tough Bluefield team last night. The Virginia Spartans traveled to Bland County. They got the victory 34 to six. Meantime, East Side over Auburn this evening and Galax with a 42-27 win. They remain unbeaten in their district and of course that sets up to trip to Grayson next week with a chance to sweep that district on the line. Speaking of titles, Gretna is on their way to a Dogwood title, but they also have the Adams Martin Trophy on the line, which goes to the Pennsylvania County School with the most wins over the others. That said, it's Chatham at Gretna tonight, and the crowd ready to go. Already 6 nothing. Gretna on the move. Melvin Wooden, the fourth, going to Amari Gunn, and watch him make the cut, and one more, and yeah, he's gone. 75 yards, it's 12 to nothing, Gretna. Meantime, second quarter, still more Gretna, more Wooden the fourth, more gun. Pretty layout right there for the catch. Gretna's up 20 to nothing at the half. Meantime, Chatham on the opening drive of the second half, trying to get it going. Xander Cornett looking to the zone. That is picked by, you guessed it, Amari Gunn. Gretna was in business. Sudden change can lead to sudden pain. And it would right here. Wouldn't the fourth to gun again? We're going to speed him up. Gretna, they didn't need any help from us speeding it up. It's 44-7, your final. Keep an eye on the Colonels of Alta Vista. They are warming to the task, 50-26. to William Campbell and Dan River, maybe the game of the night, 24-22. 
What a season of what would be a season of high school football, I should say, in Lynchburg without the Jug Bowl rivalry. That would be just sadness. So let's get to it because we have it this evening. It's Heritage at EC Glass from City Stadium and Jamarian Cottrell. Huge pass right here. Kamani Mosley to put Glass in scoring position. Yes, he held on. Uh, that was a catch for Glass. Cottrell hands it off to Tavion Carter. He's going to put the Hilltoppers on the board. They were up 7-0. Heritage is going to answer. Aiden Slash to Tavion Clark. And this is a winning connection. Heritage on the board. We've got a 7-6 game. Slash going to try and keep it rolling. Uh, watch right here. The pass to Christopher Reed. It's going to be picked by Braden Morgan. Glass playing some good defense tonight in a 17-6 rivalry game victory. LCA looking to stay perfecto at Brookville tonight, and they were up big as we pick it up in the second half. David Bradley going to put Brookville on the board, and now it's 42-6. to Lincoln McDaniel tries to continue momentum. The pass going to be tipped by Weston Woodard, caught by Jordan Whiteclaw, and uh, David Bradley eventually will be, pa will be passing it, and it will be picked off successfully this time by Landon Brown. Here it is right here, and LCA just simply dominating. We'll look at the fourth quarter, and Elijah Castroneta, he's going to plow it on in to bring LCA to its final total, 49-6 to six is your final. They are, of course, still perfecto. Rustburg over Liberty, 74-0 tonight. The Red Devils rolling. JF over Amherst. So... JF has the LCA game looming, a battle of unbeatens for the title of the Seminole coming up next week. Meantime, Bath and Narrows, both big winners, sets up a big-time showdown. That's right, Bath and Narrows next week. That will be a great one. Eastmont and Twin Valley has been postponed. They will play on Monday. Holston with a one-point win over Roar will treat 29-28 to tonight. Before we go to break, I remind everyone, there are certain rules someone must abide by to survive a scary movie. When Salem says, I'll be right back, they usually mean the playoffs. We'll see if they remain on course tonight. Meanwhile, William Byrd has indeed answered the call in the Blue Ridge District. We'll see if they continue to roll. And Botetot has that survive and advance mentality down pat. We'll check in with the Cavs in Daleville, plus this. All right, the Spartans are currently the two seed in Region 4D and climbing with, of course, all eyes on Jefferson Forrest's undefeated run. Tonight, a Region 3D contender in Christiansburg coming to Salem. So let's get you out and have a look at Peyton Lewis and Chris Cole getting their Under Armour All-American jerseys. You got to love that. And here we go. How about Peyton Lewis? He's headed to Tennessee, but he's got some running to do first as he trots on in, and it's 7-0 Salem. Second quarter, Spartans up 14-3, and it's Lewis again going left, and they are literally taking down tacklers, and here we go. Wide open field, cuts back, 45-yard touchdown, Salem in control. Spartans up 28-3. This is Isaiah Cotto breaking free. He's got the need for speed, 63 yards up the middle. He's into the end zone, and Christiansburg is on the board. In the third with a commanding lead, how about Eli Taylor? Going a quick pass to Jalen Allen in Salem. Is 8-1 and one on an eight-game winning streak. 49-10 is your final. Here's their head coach. Christiansburg is a darn good football team, and uh, they're going to they're gonna go deep in the playoffs. And... Uh, you know, so we executed well against a good football team, you know, in our passing game and, and running the football. 
Indeed they did. All right, Blacksburg at PH, and this is a night of celebration for that PH undefeated team in 1973. 50th anniversary for those guys. Congrats to them. PH starting off strong. The junior Seth Shepard, now the quarterback, to Kowali Carter takes it to the one, where a handoff to Marcel Murray finishes the job, and we've got a 6-0 PH lead. Blacksburg, well, they couldn't make anything happen on offense. PH, we've got Dave Deja vu, and it's Murray into the end zone, slicing on in 12 0 PH. Now, Shepard, who makes this team all the more dangerous because you can get your weapons out in space to Carson Derry, who fights off a defender, pinballs on in. PH dominating this game 62 to nothing is your final. Pulaski County at Hidden Valley, the Titans looking for their second win in a row. Pulaski County's Trevor Gallimore has the outside. And look at him, Book. He'll take it to the house on the second play of the game. 7-0 Cougars. Hidden Valley going up top. Braden Moore, Daniel Robinson for the score right here. Pretty play as he cuts across the middle. 7-6 Pulaski in this one. Gallimore again galloping straight to the camera. A little stiff arm there. 14-6 Pulaski in command. Hidden Valley. Going to try and get the fourth down stop, and they got it right there. Cohen Whiteneck with the stop. But this one, 21-6 Pulaski at the half, 41-19. The Cougars victorious this evening. How about Turner Ashby blanking Rockbridge County 55 to nothing uh, In the Piedmont. Bassett in a rivalry game. Blanks Martinsville. Bengals roll. Magna Vista remains undefeated. 54-25 tonight. Warriors on their way to the Piedmont District title. GW Danville 57-19 tonight. I dare I say fly. Eagles fly. In the Blue Ridge District, William Byrd is the two seed in Region 3D and the Terriers. Two hurdles left starting for tonight for the district title. Stanton River first. So let's get you out for a look at that one. Coach Brad Lutz and company closing in on that district crown. Quarterback Brady Barnes of Stanton River under pressure right here. Ding, 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 da, da, ding, ding. He's hit by Jediah English. Ball is out. English knows it. It's because he forced the fumble and he covers it. And yes, that was the ruling. Bird cashes in. Lane Shoemaker. Splitting the defense for the score and a touchdown. Terriers, D-line, looking good, feeling good. Jonathan Rosser right there, closing that run down. Bird's defense, perhaps the difference moving forward, 34-6 to six is your final. More Blue Ridge District. North side at Lord Botetot. It is senior night for Coach Harless and company. Jakari Nicely swing past Tristan Overbay. Nice catch and run. He's slung down, but they're moving the chains in Daleville. Nicely caps the drive. Uh, here he comes. The take, the keep, the sweep, and he'll drag tacklers into the end zone, and it's 7-0. Still first half. Vikings with some special teams trouble. High snap. Nicely is there to greet the punter. Look out. Ball is up in the air. It's loose. And Cody McConaughey recovers for the Cavaliers. It's 14 to nothing. Second quarter. Vikings on the move. Angel Rigney rolls, strolls, and desires and fires. And it's Riker Workman hauling it in. Back corner of the end zone. 14-7 game. This one would go to LB. 48-21. More Blue Ridge District, Franklin County at the William Fleming Colonel. Senior night at William Fleming. Congrats to all. This is a defensive battle throughout. The Colonel's Alex Mormon right here, sacking Ryder Gardner to keep the Eagles off the board. Later, Omarza Gray coming up big late in the first half because he's going to get the pick right there. Nice athletic play to keep that 7 nothing lead intact. Second half, Johnny Gonzalez pulls in the interception on the 15. He is going to rumble on in for the touchdown. William Fleming gets a hard-fought win tonight. 21-0, your final over Franklin County. Allegheny 
is having a year of years. The Cougars, 57 to nothing. Meantime, Glenver getting in a playoff position, 49-15 over Floyd. The Bobcats remain undefeated. Congrats to our reigning player of the year, quarterback Landon Clark, committed to Elon, and uh, he is going to be a good one at whatever level he ends up playing. That said, Smith Mountain Lake, is a winner 53-20. Virginia Episcopal over Rappahannock County this evening. And how about North Cross rolling over Hargrave 71-6. to 